What's up guys? Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and I love to travel and take you guys along with me. Is that weird? That might be a word. Let's do that again. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. As you guys know or may not know, we just got back from cruising with princess cruises for the very first time and uh it was a lot of fun but now it's the hard part we have to decide which cruise line we want to be loyal to now we've been on four different cruise lines we've been on carnival norwegian royal caribbean and now princess so in this video i'm gonna give you our pros and cons of each cruise line we have traveled with now just a warning a preface these are our opinions based on our experiences. We have no affiliation with any of the cruise lines I'm going to mention other than just us being a paying passenger. And also we're your average cruisers so we don't splurge on any of the sweets or or you know the super extravagant things. So yeah. So some of you guys are probably wondering why am I doing this type of video or why should we compare them at all? Well, we want to figure out which cruise line we like most before sticking to one cruise line to build up our loyalty. Why is that important? Why build up credit or, uh, or points with the subpar cruise line? That just doesn't make any sense to us. So, this is why we are doing our pros and cons so we can figure out which one we want to be loyal to. And although we strive to be loyal to one cruise line, that will not deter us from cruising with other cruise lines especially if they have a deal that we can snag. Now many of you may be wondering why not try to cruise with Celebrity, Holland America, you know, all the other uh, cruise lines as well. And honestly, marketing is a huge, huge deal to us, especially being military. Sometimes we do last minute vacations and things like that. And the marketing that we see the most is Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, and sometimes Princess Cruises as well. So yes, we might be missing stuff, but we like what we like. So let's get on to it. The first cruise I ever did, my very first cruise was with Carnival Sunshine. One thing we like about Carnival is the cost. If you really just need a cheap getaway, Carnival is definitely the way to go. You can find them virtually at a lot of the, the main ports like Orlando, Tampa, Texas, the East Coast, the West Coast, Europe. The accessibility for Carnival Cruise Lines is great. We also really like Carnival's Private Island, Half Moon K. There were a lot of activities that we could do and everything was virtually included, which is a big win for us. Now, I definitely would classify us as the young adult crowd and uh, Carnival truly, truly caters to the younger crowd. They do have an adults only area which is really really nice whenever you need a little bit of quiet time but if you are the party type carnival definitely has that as well and the food guys burgers whoo they are definitely the best at sea the specialty dining isn't that bad as well their sushi it's a win now some cons with carnival Again, it caters to the younger crowd, and if you do not necessarily like kids running around you 24-7, I wouldn't go with Carnival. Also, this may be specific to the Carnival Sunshine, even though it is a older ship, the rooms are older as well. They have that old vibe of being an older cruise ship. And last but not least, the port flow at Port Canaveral for Carnival Cruise Lines very very unorganized now this is our experiences for before covid this was back in 2015 they may have updated since then i cannot speak on that however during our experiences for this carnival sunshine cruise the port flow it was just so crowded so many people nobody really knew where they were going um you just kind of had to figure it out our next cruise was with royal caribbean on rhapsody of the seas pro for Royal Caribbean for us, 
the hospitality oh my goodness from day one we went to a bar got a drink and from then on for the entire cruise the bartender knew our names he knew what we liked and we just stuck with him he was great he was very very personable which truly made us feel welcomed and relaxed and at home royal caribbean has fun for all ages however i do believe that royal caribbean tends to age more towards the middle age crowd which is us we aren't huge gamblers but if you do like gambling the casino on royal caribbean was really really nice they did not allow for smoking inside of the casino which made it 10 times better you don't have to worry about playing your game playing your table games your slots and having to worry about secondhand smoke which is a win in my book royal caribbean also offers a lot of different types of shows and if you like shows royal caribbean has some of the best and last but not least their food we loved the dining room service as well as the room service. Some nights the room service was actually better than the dining room, which is crazy, but it was still good. Now just a few cons for Royal Caribbean. Because we went on a smaller ship on Rhapsody of the Seas, they did have a smaller amount of activities. They were starting to get a little bit repetitive and uh, there just wasn't a lot to do. Also, their buffet really wasn't the best. Sometimes, on cruises, buffets are like the number one spot to go to, but for us, in our case, it was either room service or the dining room. They had way better food than the buffet. Our third cruise was with Norwegian Cruise Line on the Norwegian Breakaway. Just like Royal Caribbean, the hospitality was amazing. The casino didn't allow for smokers so again just like royal caribbean you didn't have to worry about catching that secondhand smoke while you're playing your games for this cruise norwegian accepted our bid to upgrade our stateroom and we ended up with a spa balcony suite which was pretty fun we had access to the thermal suite inside of the spa it was a very very relaxing area adults only as well with stone loungers saunas and a lot of padded loungers with the view of the front of the ship, it was amazing, especially on sea days. The food was amazing. From the dining room to the specialty dining, Norwegian definitely takes the cake, especially when it comes to the buffet food. Chris and I found ourselves going to the buffet more than anything else. Also, there was food available anywhere at any time. You could be hungry for a burger at two o'clock in the morning. You go down to the pub and you got a burger. I know some cruise lines only do pizza and a little bit of hors d'oeuvres from a certain time to a certain time, but no, Norwegian's got that down pat. And after a long night of fun and activities, you need help finding your stateroom? Well, whenever you go into the hallways, the fish on the floor always swim forward, which is amazing, especially if you like to get a little too turned. Now, some things that we really did not like about Norwegian, well, they're private island. I don't know if it's just Norwegian or if it's other cruise lines as well, like MSC or Celebrity. But the private island in Belize, I was not a fan. Unlike Carnival's private island, Half Moon K in the Bahamas, Norwegian's private island, you had to pay for a lot of the things. Now you would think, hmm, if my cruise is already paid for, and my cruise line has their own private island, why wouldn't everything on the island be paid for as well? Well, now with Norwegian, you gotta pay. And another con that we have for Norwegian is their communication. Yes, we were coming out of the height of COVID, the peak of COVID, cruisers started to get back into the groove of traveling again, and well, some things kinda just fell through the cracks with Norwegian especially when it came to communication to the passengers inside of the cruise terminal, just trying to figure out why we are four hours behind of our embarkation times. But at the end, everything was okay. I mean, relatively speaking. <laughs> and last but not least, Princess Cruise Lines. We went on Princess Cruise Lines' newest ship, the Discovery Princess, and we did an Alaska cruise. 
definitely different than taking a tropical vacation going to a warm area but since we live in Alaska we figured it had to be done sometime right the Discovery Princess was very, very, very elegant. You felt high class, you felt just elegance just across the ship from the decor, the hospitality, everything. They had activities for all ages. The port flow was amazing. We cruised out of Seattle and they had signs, placards, personnel. It was amazing. It was super, super easy. Likely to say the easiest embarkation we've ever had. They also had free laundry on every other floor, I believe, but it definitely was on our floor and we definitely utilized it. It had free laundry with laundry soap, dryer sheets, bleach, anything you needed for your laundry, they had it. They even had free irons. So you didn't have to worry about sending your clothes away to get it ironed for formal night you could just walk down the hall to the laundry room and do it yourself. In the rooms, there were endless outlets, especially, here's a key note, outlets on the bedside table lamps. Those are really hard to come by nowadays. And Princess Cruise Lines, they did it right. And the last thing that we truly loved about Princess Cruise Lines is their medallion. You didn't have to have a card to scan into your room or a card to give to the bartender no princess cruise lines has the newest technology of utilizing their medallion you walk up to the bar your profile comes up and they knew exactly who you were and what room you stayed in also you could utilize the app in order to have food delivered to you anywhere on the ship which was pretty cool now going into the cons for princess cruise lines on the very first day there were a lot of issues with the app. However, if you did your research beforehand, you knew that all you had to do was log out of the app on your phone, log back in, and you were good to go. Also, we ran into an issue on the very first day where all of the bars, regardless of if you had the package or not, they were charging your room for drinks. So, on the second day during our sea day, there was a long line of at guest services for people who, one, didn't know how to use the app, two, couldn't access any of their information through the app, or three, had to reverse all of the charges if you had the drink package. They had to reverse all of the charges off of your account. Another thing we truly didn't like about Prince is that they had trivia every other hour of every single day. Now don't get me wrong, if you love trivia, holy cow, go Princess Cruise Lines for sure. But if you need a little bit of variety of activities, don't go to Princess Cruise Lines. Don't do it. They definitely cater to the older crowd, which Chris and I don't necessarily fall into that category. However, if you do like a low-key, elegant, slow-moving, including the people in the hallways, slow-moving cruise, go Princess. Now in comparison to previous cruises, especially Norwegian, Princess Cruise Line's casino was a smoke box. It really was. They allowed for smoking in their casino, which made it difficult for people who do have sensitivities to smoke. Also, their spa, similar to Norwegian's thermal suite, the Enclave was not giving the good vibes. We took a tour of the spa on day one, and Chris actually was able to count the stone loungers, and there were six. Six stone loungers for the biggest ship in Princess Cruise Line's fleet. Come on, guys. They definitely could have did a little bit something different with that spa. And last but not least, Princess, your food. We were not impressed, like, at all. The food on the first day, yeah, okay. It's It brought you in, it made you feel good, made you feel at home, and then the days following, the food was not, was not our favorite. So, all that being said, if we had to choose today, if I had to choose right now which cruise line we would stick with, we would definitely choose Norwegian Cruise Line, just purely on the food and the hospitality. However, we have one more cruise to go on before truly committing, and that's an Oasis class ship with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. We want to experience the feeling of getting lost on a cruise ship, the feeling of which activity do we want to go to? Because there's so many activities for so many different age groups. Once we do that, 
then we could choose which one we want to be loyal to. But as I said in the beginning, a deal is a deal. And if we could snag a deal with a different cruise line, so be it. If we had to rank all four of our cruises just based on our experiences, it would be Norwegian Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, Princess Cruises, and then Carnival. Comment down below, which cruise line do you like the most? Have you been on a cruise? If you haven't been on a cruise, do you want to go? And if so, which one? So, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button down below. Whenever you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos that we post. And uh, with that, it's time to book our next cruise. I wonder which one we'll choose. See ya.